Okay. Hello. Hello. We are live with day five of the January Whole30. Welcome back to the YouTube live series that I've been hosting every single day so far. Here with you with, uh, maybe I'll leave my glasses off today, the Whole30 day by day. We are here for our book club. We are going to talk about day five. We're going to talk about the weekend coming up. We're going to talk about how your why prompts went yesterday. Why am I seeing so many unexpected benefits of my Whole30? We're going to explore how that went. But good morning to everybody. It's really great to have you. The chat is already super energized, which I love. Danny, I'm really happy that you're here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Day four can be a rough one. Day four and five, they're called kill all the things for a reason. But as I said yesterday, we want your Whole30 mindset to be looking for evidence that this Whole30 is really rewarding for you. It is easy, all the ways that it's easy, all the ways that it's already bringing you NSVs, all the ways that you're already seeing unexpected success with the problem. That is exactly what we're here to talk about today. So I am excited. Patricia went to bed toddler early. Yes. I mean, that has to be my absolute favorite thing to do in general. I mean, at this point, like, let's just face it. I'm officially an older person. Going to bed at 830 is like an absolute delight. But going to bed toddler early, especially during the first week of your Whole30, can be so helpful. Really help you restore some of your energy. Really help you practice self-care as your body is just you know, figuring out this new way of eating. So I'm really happy that you were able to get to bed that early. Paige, good to see you. Hi, thanks for joining us today. Meredith is deep in my kill all the things feelings. Yeah, yesterday someone was like, I don't even like myself right now. I'm annoyed with myself right now. And I'm like, yeah, that's a, that is for sure. A whole 30 kill all the things feeling. I remember really early on in the program, I had someone leave a comment in the forum back in the earliest days. And she was like, my husband is breathing so loud. And I was like, yeah, you're obviously on Whole30 Day 5. Yes, you are. Totally understand. This too shall pass. I like hearing it. Kara, happy birthday, Kara. So excited that you're spending your birthday with us. Welcome. I think this makes you a Capricorn. I'm not great with my astrological signs. But happy birthday. I hope that you enjoy it so much. I hope that you have so much good, delicious Whole30 food. I hope that you take advantage of how amazing you feel and self-confident you feel. Go be social. Go do fun things. Cheers with that, like LaCroix in your glass. Absolutely happy birthday to you. So excited. Really good to hear from everybody. Meredith is saying, I need some weekend tips. Oh, we're going to get into it, Meredith. I had a really great conversation with someone via DMs two days ago who brought up this really astute observation about Whole30 on the weekends. And I really want to talk to you about that today. In fact, I brought this person's comment in so we can call, I'll look at it together and discuss it together. But I'm really, uh, yeah, we're going to get into it for sure. Hello from Cape Cod. I'm glad you are sleeping better, feeling great. That makes me so happy. You know, there's a variety of feelings on day five. You might still be in that kill all the things, kind of headachey, kind of tired lull. You might already be feeling better and awesome. I know that when I come back and do a Whole30, because I am so, um, I think my food freedom plan is so dialed in now and the Whole30 just like feels like coming home. I can get into that sort of like super energized, sleeping better, feeling better by about day four or five. It takes me no time whatsoever to get into that phase where I'm like, okay, this feels amazing. This is like peak whole 30. I'm in it. So depending on your experience with the program, you may get there sooner. It may take you a little longer. All is well. It will come. But if you're still in all the kill, all the kill, all the things phase, don't worry. It is a phase. Um, Lisa's talking about, we have a whoop group started. So if you wear a whoop band to track your activity levels and your recovery, as I do, we have a Whole30 group in the Whoop app, and you can search for it. I'm going to put the group name in the chat. You can search for it in the Whoop app and join, and in there, we are all talking about our non-scale victories with the Whole30 using Whoop. So Whoop is giving us the kind of like objective data that we might be noticing. Oh, I think I'm sleeping better. But when your WHOOP scores specifically say 
yeah, you're sleeping better. You had more deep sleep. You had fewer periods awake time. You had a longer sleep cycle. Like that's data that you just can't argue with. And if Lisa has been in the green since starting, that means your nervous system is really well balanced. It's prepared to take on strain or stress. It means that your body is like primed and you're feeling really good, at least from all of your markers. So I love hearing that. Great work. Let's see. Kathleen's saying, I don't know what happened yesterday. Let's see. Didn't get to bed until 9.30. 17 hours awake. So tired. Yeah. You know, that's the thing, right? Our whole 30 schedules are not always going to be perfectly regimented. We may have days where we get less sleep because of work or kids or life stuff. We may have days where our sleep is disrupted, especially in the earlier phases of the whole 30, where sometimes sleep can become disrupted before it gets better. But the only thing, you know, the only thing I'm going to ask of you, did you put Whole30 food in your mouth? If you ate Whole30 food, you were supremely successful with your Whole30 day four. And so that should be applauded. That should be self five, high five, big win, victory, like BJ Fogg says, whatever you need to do to give yourself the proper reward and like acknowledgement for that accomplishment, you absolutely should. So I think that is great. Brenda is saying, I have family coming over this weekend. What should I make? You can feel free to share your favorite Whole30 family-friendly recipe in the comments. The thing is, I venture to say, given the quality of the recipes that we have now in our Whole30 cookbooks, from our Whole30 contributors and recipe creatives, people like Michelle Tam of Nom Nom Paleo, Danielle Walker, who has a cookbook, um, are all of our Whole30 endorsed cookbooks. We have so many recipes that you could put on any dinner table and nobody would look at it and think, this is kind of weird. Like this isn't like this isn't normal food or this looks like diet food. You would never say that about a Whole30 meal. So I think you can make whatever you want. The smoky sweet potato chili from the Whole30 Slow Cooker Cookbook is hands down one of my favorites. And what I like about that, depending on your level of comfort, is that you can serve it with plant-based, you know, um, Whole30 sour cream. There's a recipe on the plant-based Whole30 website. So you make your own sour cream and you can serve it with dairy sour cream for people who aren't on the Whole30. You could have a little bowl with shredded cheese that people, if they choose to, not on the Whole30, can add to their chili. You can serve it with a side of carrots and a side of celery for you to like scoop and dip. And if you want to serve tortilla chips for them, you absolutely can. So that's one meal that is so incredibly versatile. Same thing with like a taco bar. My family loves a good taco bar. We just did like a ground elk taco bar last night where you've got salsa, guac. You can do tortilla shells for them. You can do lettuce wraps for yourself. The meat is compatible. The spice mixture, the primal pellet taco blend is compatible and you can cut up some pineapple or do a pineapple salsa. There's a compatible hot sauce, obviously. They can add cheese if they want to or sour cream. You can make your own plant-based sour cream or add Whole30 compatible ranch or buffalo vinaigrette. So there are so many recipes that you can make that are either straight out of the Whole30 recipe book, absolutely appropriate and delicious for anybody and nobody would look at it and think it was weird, or there are recipes that you can make and let people kind of add and mix and match their own things so that your meal is Whole30 compatible and they can kind of freeform if they want to. So I think it's good of you to think ahead. And the Whole30 Friends and Family Cookbook also has some delicious recipes that are perfect for occasions, whether it's a dinner party, if you want to make like a little appetizer before you have people coming over, that cookbook would be really phenomenal for this. So um, Meredith wants to know, oh, ate Chipotle yesterday. Yeah. The Whole30 Salad Bowl, the whole it's now called the Wholesome Bowl at Chipotle, named after you, which I love. But the Wholesome Bowl at Chipotle is just such a clutch, like emergency food, on-the-go food, going to stay with your in-laws and you're not sure what you're going to have for lunch. Don't feel like cooking lunch. Don't feel like doing meal prep for dinner. I love that we have this option now at Chipotle where you can order it right through the app, right through the website, deliver your pickup. Guaranteed Whole30 compatible. Add your own secret sauce over the top if you want. Add your own made by Whole30 Ranch or your favorite Whole30 approved salad dressing. But yes, don't sleep on the Chipotle bowl because they are absolutely delicious and you can find Chipotles basically anywhere now, which I think is fantastic. 
Karen is saying there was a stressful week. I'm so sorry for your loss, Karen. That does sound really hard and stressful. I'm really glad that you're finding your Whole30 commitment and maybe the, hopefully the community and the offerings and the kind of sense of belonging here grounding during that difficult time. I've heard from a lot of people who have used the Whole30 during periods of grief or grieving and they have found it really grounding. You know, it can feel like during those periods of your life, there's a lot that's out of your control and it can feel really special to know that something that is so foundational for your mental and physical health, the food that you're putting in your body, at least that is covered. At least you know what you're eating there. You know that it's going to make you feel your best. So I'm really happy. And honestly, I'm honored that you are coming to the Whole30 and leaning on the Whole30 during this difficult time. So my heart is with you. Kelly Z wants to make a suggestion. Oh, relaxation videos for kill all the things. What a good idea. You know, Spotify also has some very relaxing playlists. There are either nature sounds. I use some binaural beats playlists. They have these sort of special playlists with songs that are at a very specific hertz for relaxing and sort of relaxing your brain waves. You can use those. I love the idea of like a YouTube video with rainforest. That's a really smart idea. I like that. You're changing your environment to bring more calm and peace. I like that quite a bit. Yes. Nom nom paleo. Let, Michelle Tam is so dang talented. She's on Whole30 Recipes this week. She just posted a green goddess salad dressing over on that feed on Whole30 Recipes today. That If that green color of her dressing does not bring you joy, I don't know what will. It looks so delicious. It's so versatile. Of course, I have all of her cookbooks and her app, but her recipes are absolutely incredible. And I think we have so many talented recipe creatives um, along with the Whole30. Trifecta meal saved the day. Yes. I really love the fact that we have Whole30 approved meal delivery now. I get trifecta every single week. I have for years before they were even Whole30 compatible. I get several Whole30 meals delivered straight to my fridge and they always send a variety. So I'm not like getting the same meals every single week. There's built-in variety, which I really enjoy, but I also add some a la carte protein options. So right now I was getting turkey burgers and pulled pork. I think next week I'm going to be getting shrimp and salmon and it's like a pound of pre-cooked protein. So what that allows me to do is just use my leftovers, like my leftover veggies, my leftover salad, and then have some totally cooked protein already ready to go. It's a total lifesaver if you want to make quick and easy dinners where it's like the protein usually takes the longest to cook and you can just skip that and add trifecta. And you can save 40% off your first trifecta order with the code WHOLE30. So if you're into that, I just think having some trifecta in the fridge can be one of those like emergency food taken care of. I have a full Whole30, hearty, delicious, guaranteed compatible lunch that I can heat up in one minute and 45 seconds. And then I'm, got, I'm done on the way. And I eat it right in the container so I don't even have to dirty a dish. It's pretty genius. So I'm really glad that you have enjoyed your... Uh, trifecta meals. We have the link to the plant-based website right here in the chat. Thank you so much. Liz, yeah, taco nights are like, phew, they're incredible. You can just do so much with taco nights. I've seen hot dog bars. I've seen chili bars, like make one kind of main meal and then have all of these different sides in accoutrement. I think it's absolutely delicious. Nicole, the Whole30 approved meals at Walmart, unfortunately, were discontinued during the pandemic. We were so bummed to hear that they were going away. But I think the pandemic and supply chain and ingredients just has hit so many different CPG brands so incredibly hard. And unfortunately, they discontinued the meals. We would love to see them come back in some capacity. And yes, you still can get Grandsisters. Um, I find Grandsisters at my local Whole Foods. I don't know if they're available at Walmart anymore. But I have several Grandsisters meals in my freezer right now. And then you can also do a Whole30 approved meal delivery that doesn't come in frozen. It comes in fresh every week like Trifecta. So we do have a few options for you there. Marianne, the chili I mentioned was the slow, Whole30 Slow Cooker Cookbook. And it's called Smoky Sweet Potato Chili. I think we also have the recipe on the Whole30 website available for free. So if you don't have that cookbook, I think this is one of the recipes that we gave away because it's like a favorite in the book. Smoky Sweet Potato Chili. Yes, and I absolutely love it. 
Uh, Y'all are eating trifecta right now. Yes, I know. It is really good. I'm glad to hear it. Today's beverage, uh, since I always come prepared with many beverages, is fond bone broth. I started, I went to the gym really early this morning. So my first mud water of the day was kind of early and I didn't want a second one, but I wanted something warm. I like having something warm for these broadcasts because I feel like it kind of helps my throat. I'm talking for like a whole hour. So Fond Bone Broth, 100% Whole30 approved. This is their liquid light, which is chicken broth with turmeric, thyme, and black pepper. I'll tell you what I do. I throw the jar in the microwave for a minute and then I pour it into a glass because I'm trying not to be like an animal. Although sometimes I'll just drink it right out of the glass. And I will sip on one of these just about every single day. I absolutely love the idea of sipping on bone broth. Extra protein, extra collagen, vitamins, minerals, delicious flavors, a cup of something warm that is not caffeinated or not tea. And it's really satiating because it does have a decent amount of protein in it. There is, I believe, 14 grams of protein in the 16 grams of protein in this jar. That's like an awesome and easy way to get extra protein into your meals. And the amino acids found in bone broth, particularly glycine, are not found in great quantities or concentrations in the muscle meat we eat. So they do offer a nice complementary amino acid profile. So I think I have, let me peek here. I think I have a code for Fond. Let me copy it and paste it into the chat. But Right now, Fond is offering a deal where you can save 15% off of your order. There we go. Let me get right back here. 15% off your order for new or existing customers with my special code. Um, give them a try. I really enjoy them. So that's what I'm sipping on here today is Fond. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. So I don't know why this is coming up, but here we go. All right. What crystals do I have out today? Um, I have some black tourmaline for grounding. I have some pink uh, rose quartz. I believe this is jasper. And then I have to ask Magdalena what this reddish brown one is. But these are the crystals that I keep with me while I YouTube live. You can find out more. I did a podcast episode with Magdalena, melissau.com slash podcasts. I'll see if I can add it to the chat and you can... The title of the podcast is called There's a Crystal in My Bra Right Now. Um, and it's a really great one. You can learn all about my crystal practice there. Let's talk about it. I keep seeing in health culture that restriction leads to binging. So this is a complex topic and I'll only touch on it lightly because this really does deserve a huge level of nuance that we probably don't have time to get into in this live. But yes, there is proven literature and quite a bit of healthcare experts and medical experts have demonstrated a link between restriction and eating disorders. It's one of the reasons why I say and have said for many years, the Whole30 is not the right program for you if you have a history of disordered eating. And if that is your context, the only way I could recommend you take on the program is under the direct supervision and approval and guidance of a licensed healthcare practitioner or therapist or counselor. So the Whole30 wasn't designed to help or support people with disordered eating habits. And any restriction can be triggering if that is your context. What I will say is that on the Whole30, we are restricting certain food groups for 30 days because we are an elimination program. Any elimination program has an element of restriction. But what we are not doing, which is different than other diets, particularly weight loss diets, is we are not restricting calories. We are not restricting macronutrients or micronutrients. We're not restricting portion sizes. We're not restricting meal timing, suggesting you you know, only eat between these hours of the day or that you fast. So one aspect of the Whole30 that goes quite a long way towards helping people feel as though they are well-nourished and they are not deprived is because you are eating to satiety. Because you're not restricting calories, you're eating when you're hungry, stopping when you're full, eating three, four, or five meals a day, whatever that looks like. If you're hungry, go have a snack. We're not limiting, we're not counting, we're not restricting. That certainly does help. 
the idea of restriction leading to overconsuming because often there's a physiological trigger for that. The restriction, not getting enough calories, not getting enough macronutrients and micronutrients, physiologically leads the body to cons- want to or send prompts to consume more, to make up for the nutrition that you are missing. We don't have that aspect on the Whole30 because we are eating to satiety. However, I still want people to be cautious going into the Whole30, understanding that you are restricting entire food groups for 30 days. And for some, even if you don't have a history of disordered eating, for some, that restriction can feel unhealthy or can be taken to an unhealthy place. So what I would say is emphasize the fact that on the Whole30, you are not restricting calories, you're not cutting calories, it is not a weight loss centered approach, you are eating when you're hungry, you're never hungry on the program, you're eating to satiety, you're eating tons and tons of nutrient dense foods, we're not limiting carbohydrates, we're not limiting fat. And that, I think, can go a long way towards ensuring that from a physiological perspective, you feel well-fed and nourished. But of course, there also is the psychological perspective, and that's why we encourage you to speak with your healthcare provider or your mental health counselor to make sure that the program is right for you before you begin. So I think that's a wonderful question and a good observation. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to chat about that. Yeah, let's talk about, I'm going to pull this up now, let's talk about Whole30 heading into the weekend. This comment came up in my DMs two days ago from a very astute whole 30 year. This person said, I'm worried about when the weekend comes because there's less structure, there's less routine. And to me, that feels a little more like I have or I may have more opportunity to like go off plan or to not make a you know the choice that's right for holding my whole 30 commitment. So I wanted to talk about this because I thought this observation was so incredibly astute. During the week, I guarantee before your whole 30 began last weekend, you planned and prepped for your week's worth of meals, at least the work week, right? We all went back to work on Tuesday after the holiday. You know you've got to think about breakfast, lunch, and dinner, during the work week, I, and most people I think, are on a much more regimented and regular schedule. I get up at a certain time, I have breakfast at a certain time, my kid gets to school at a certain time, I start work at a certain time, I've got time blocked out for lunch between this date and this date, my son gets home from school, we have dinner at this time, it's far more regimented. And my opportunity, at least mine, because I'm an older person, for like socializing, going out, parties, events, that does not happen during the week. We do not do that during the week at, at, you know, in this house at least, or like at my age. My husband might go to jiu I might occasionally go to like a yoga class, but most of the time we're staying home during the week. We don't go out. So there's far less opportunity for us to be thrown off our plan because the week is more regimented, more structured, and less opportunity. Now it comes to the weekend. Now it's Friday night. And it's like you might have opportunities to socialize. You might get invited to like happy hour after work. You might have a birthday party on the weekend. You might be going out for brunch with your friends on Sunday. There is no structure or routine. Your kid's not in school. You don't have to work. You wake up in the morning and like your whole day might be your own. And that can certainly feel a little more intimidating for somebody who's doing the whole 30, especially for the first time, because you're like, okay, well now I don't have the structure. I don't have the routine. Maybe I didn't think about meal planning on the weekend because I was like, well, I'll have all this time and I'll be able to wing it. I want you to continue thinking about planning and preparation as we head into our first weekend. I don't think you necessarily need to be as regimented about it, but you should go into the weekend thinking about what am I going to eat this weekend? Do I have food on on hand? Do I have meals planned? If I don't, when am I going to do that? Can I do that Saturday morning and set myself up for like an entire weekend and Monday full of meals or maybe just the weekend because Sunday's my meal prep day? Do I have enough trifecta in my fridge? Do I have Chipotle on speed dial? So think about planning and prep. Do you have enough emergency food? So if you do decide to go to the mall or your kid has like a swim meet and you get stuck there for hours and hours, do I have enough food that I can pack with me to make sure that I'm well fed and that I, you know, I'm not hangry and, you know, I've got a plan. So I want you to think about your plan for the weekend. 
Another thing that is super helpful for the weekend is thinking about if-then plans. So I talk about if-then plans a lot in Whole30 Day by Day. I talk about it a lot in all areas of Whole30. It's based on the subject of, it's based on the science of habit research that says if-then plans is a very specific framework that is very anchoring for the brain. So think of the word if like setting an anchor. You imagine a potentially stressful situation that might come up this weekend. If I go out for happy hour with my colleagues on Friday night, that's the anchor, then I will let them know before we leave, happy to join you. I'm not drinking right now, but like I will definitely come out and unwind. Can't wait to like start the weekend with you. Or if I'm going to happy hour with my colleagues, then I will go to the bar first before anybody can buy me something and order a sparkling water with lime. If I go to happy hour and I'm pressured to drink, then I'll say, nope, I'm not drinking right now. Nope, I'm on the whole 30. Nope, I'm good, thanks. So thinking about these if-then plans for things that might come up or you know are going to come up over the weekend because you already have social plans can be really anchoring because the if is the anchor and then when the brain notices the if situation arising, it's like pretty chill and relaxed. Your brain's like, oh, cool. I already have a plan for this. No big deal. No need to stress out. No need to panic. My if is there. I have my then. And I'm just going to enact my plan. The brain loves a plan. A plan makes the brain relaxed. In the absence of a plan, the brain tends to revert to what is easy and what is rewarding. And on the whole 30, that can spell trouble for your commitment. So think about planning and prep as you roll into your weekend and think about creating some if-then plans. If you just do those two things, you are going to have the most successful Whole30 weekend of your life. And if you do have the extra motivation, if you have the energy, use some of the time that you have over the weekend to maybe make a meal that's a little more elaborate or a little fancier or a little more involved than normal, or make a dressing from scratch that you've been wanting to try but haven't had time during the week to make. Fill up your cart at Thrive Market. Thrive Market's 30% sale is still happening. It is happening until Sunday. It is not too late to save 30% off of hundreds of Whole30 approved and compatible goods at Thrive Market. Use Saturday to like browse, put some stuff on auto, subscribe, try some new things, fill up your cart, save 30%. Good to go. But use that extra time to like do a little bit more work towards your Whole30 if you're feeling it, if you want to. If you're rolling into the weekend and you're like, I'm kind of tired, I'm kind of just still feeling cranky, I don't have the extra energy. Cool. No big deal. Eat what you've planned. Order Chipotle two days in a row. Have ingredient meals. Just, you know, do the bare minimum. But the bare minimum is absolutely still winning. The bare minimum is I'm eating Whole30 food. And if you are doing that, you are succeeding with the Whole30. You don't have to do anything else. And maybe you use the weekend to rest. Maybe you get extra sleep. Maybe you go for a walk. Maybe you catch up on your reading or you do some organizing or you lay around on the couch and like binge a season of Great British Baking Show, which is like, well, oh, not that show. That would, <laughs> I would say not that show. That's one of our favorite shows, but I can't think of a worse show to watch when you're on the whole 30. So let's think about something else like a Better Call Saul or something. We're watching that right now. Um, or maybe old episodes of Ted Lasso. That would be like a very feel good show on the whole 30, I feel like. Um, so Anyway, if you think about planning and preparation and if-then plans heading into your weekend, I guarantee you will find success. So let's close this out and let me jump into the comments right now. Emily, I'm really glad that coming into the lives has been helpful. It's been really fun to talk about all of these things. I know, Alyssa, (laughs) I can't believe I said that. (laughs) I mean, we... I won't even talk about it anymore. I'm not even going to conjure up the image of the Great British Bake Off. I won't anymore. We need a Whole30 cooking show. I want to pitch to Padma, who is one of my favorite human beings, that there is a Whole30 quick fire segment on the next season of Top Chef. Can you imagine what Top Chef could do with a Whole30 quick fire? I am manifesting this right now. This is my dream come true. If anybody watching has any connections whatsoever to Padma or Top Chef, I actually even sent Gregory Gorday, Gigi, I sent him a text once and I was like, hey, I really want to manifest this with Padma. Like, could you pass it along? Like whisper it in her ear because they're friends. Anyway, Padma, if you're watching or if you happen to see this, call me for many reasons, but because I think this would make the most amazing feature. Anyway, I'm digressing now in my love for Padma. Going out for dinner on Saturday. Yes, this is it. 
This is what you're doing, Michelle. Absolutely. Brilliant genius. Before you get to the restaurant, have your plan. Look at the menu ahead of time. Pick up the phone around 2 or 3 p.m. when most restaurants are not that busy or like 2 p.m. right as they're about to close for the lunch, like between the lunch and dinner break and go, hey, um, I'm doing the Whole30 right now. I have some dietary restrictions. I wanted to ask you about this ingredient. Can you tell me about it? Or I wanted to ask you about this meal. Could I sub plain mashed potatoes instead of like the butter and cream mashed potatoes? Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Then you have your plan. Then when you sit down at the table, you open the menu. You're like, okay, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do the burger, no bun. I would love just a garden salad. Bring me some oil and vinegar if you would please for dressing. Um, if you're able, that would be great. And um, instead of a loaded baked potato, can you just bring me a, a plain baked potato? That would be wonderful. I'll just put some olive oil over it. Thanks. You have your order. You rattle it off. No big deal. Nobody notices that you passed on the bread basket. Nobody notices that you ordered a sparkling water instead of wine with dinner. If they do, you can go, oh, no, I'm just not drinking tonight. Thanks. And then you continue on with your conversation. Rolling into your plans, already having a plan, is going to make your time there so much more enjoyable because now your brain is not going to have to spend any time or energy whatsoever thinking about, oh, what am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? You already have that covered. And now you can spend all of your time and energy on the social interaction, which I think is the perfect way to do it. So Michelle, I think that's great. I love that plan. I hope you have a wonderful dinner and enjoy. Definitely Ted Lasso. That's what I'm going to recommend. Elizabeth is still feeling tired. Whoop recovery is good. Sleep is still making up. Yeah, I think that's smart. I think that's really smart, Elizabeth. Orange Theory is high intensity activity. In your first week or two, that might feel tough. So if you want to wait to go back, great. If you want to go back in and just not pay attention to the leaderboard at all and just tell your instructor like, hey, I'm doing my own thing today. Doing my own thing. I'm going to go half intensity. Love the energy here. Love the community here. So excited to be here. But like, you know, not going to go, I'm not going to give it 100% today. Cool. I love that for you. I love the sense of confidence that that, that that will bring. Take up space. Go get the workout that you want to get in and honor how your body is feeling on your Whole30. So I think that is great, Paige. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there, are, there are definitely things that you do not want to watch slash consume when you are on a Whole30. Yes. Or like even Instagram accounts that you might have to like mute for just a little while. You received a barbecue sauce. Well, that's interesting, Michelle. Um, if it had the Whole30 approved logo on it, that would be really surprising because of course we vet that. Why don't you do me a favor, send some details over to headquarters at Whole30.com and we will investigate. I will say this, if you, there are like a lot of brands on Amazon that might say they're Whole30 and they're not. So you really do want to look for that Whole30 approved logo on the package and make sure that that Whole30 approved logo is there because those are the products that we have extensively vetted and extensively reviewed. But of course, we'll take a look at it for you. Our Whole30 approved brand partners, like they don't really make mistakes. They're very, very good. Um, and our team is very good about vetting. So yes, Whole30 cooking show. Mikey, let's manifest this, would ya? Everyone should manifest this for us. Sixth Whole30, welcome back. Yeah, you know, Jackie, come back. I want you to work your food freedom plan in between Whole 30s because I don't want you like yo-yoing. I don't want you either on a Whole 30 and then as soon as your Whole 30 is over, you're not working your food freedom plan at all and you're just like face first in whatever you want to eat. There's no in between. I don't think that's a healthy place to be. That's like not much different than being on a yo-yo weight loss diet where you're either all in or you're not paying attention at all. I want you to work that food freedom plan in between. I do. And if life gets in the way, a stressful situation, a move, a baby, a job, grieving, a holiday, what have you, if that throws you off your game and you realize like, okay, I'm trying to work my food freedom plan, but I'm really struggling to come on back and I feel like I need a little bit more support. Great. Come back and do the whole 30. We've got you. You know, you feel great doing it. You know, you've got a super supportive community. You know how, you know, you know how to put meals together. You know how to put snacks together. Like it feels pretty simple at this point. It feels pretty easy. Not a ton of, you know, executive function going into it, meaning you don't have to work so hard as you did on your first one. So yeah, come on back. We love to see it. We love to have you back. Absolutely. Uh, okay. I love this idea. I wanted to do a little poll. Maybe we can do it on the Whole30 social media channel. Like what is the like thing? that you last took to a restaurant. 
Like, what's the last thing that you brought? I bring bottles of coconut aminos with me to every sushi restaurant I go to. I don't care how fancy it is. I don't care how expensive it is. I don't care where I am. I am bringing my bottle of coconut aminos. I will take it in my purse. I will pull it out and I will throw it on the table. In fact, our like swankiest sushi restaurant here in Salt Lake City called Takashi downtown, for a while, we were going there so often that they were like, well, why don't you just let us hold your bottle for you? Like, we'll just put it in the fridge. And then when you come out, like when you come back, we'll bring it out for you. And they did. They held it for me for a little while. So I bring coconut aminos. Bring your own salad dressing. Absolutely. There's like nothing wrong or weird about that whatsoever. If you don't want just plain oil and vinegar and they have dressings that all include added sugar, like bring your own. You know, surreptitiously throw it over your salad. Absolutely. I would, I bring my own snacks to the movie theater all the time. Brandon thinks, like he makes fun of me, but I will legitimately bring a tub of Kite Hill cream cheese, a whole tub. And I will bring like two meat sticks and probably like a little packet of pistachios or some karma nuts. And that's my movie theater snack. It's like, I like having a snack at the movies. People are eating popcorn, they're munching. I enjoy that activity. And I like to bring my own. Even if I'm not on the Whole30, I'm not really eating movie theater popcorn. That's not really my thing. I do like popcorn if I make it myself, but not movie theater. But yeah, I'm going to bring my own. NBD. I love that energy. Keep that energy up. Normalize that. Abby's asking about social events. Why are you doing a Whole30? Oh, let's talk about boundaries when people ask why. Here's what I think. Oh, that bone broth is so good. Here's what I think. I think when people ask why you are doing a Whole30 and it's just not either the situation isn't right for you to get into it or you're doing it for a deeply personal reason, like at a party, should you say, oh, I've been having explosive diarrhea for weeks and I think that this Whole30 is going to help me figure out what's causing it? Maybe not. I mean, maybe yes. Maybe you do because if they've been asking persistently, that gets them quiet. But no, you shouldn't have to share personal information if you don't want to. I like the idea of a pre-green boundary here. You're not explicitly saying, I won't talk about it, but you're saying something like, um, you know, I just felt like it was time for a reset. Or I always feel great when I'm on the Whole30 and it felt like the right time to go back. Or I like the idea of a dietary self-experiment and the Whole30 has worked really well for a lot of people. You aren't saying, I'm not going to answer your question. That is the red boundary. The red boundary is like, I will not answer. But you're giving them like a general reason, right? And so if you say, I just liked the idea of a dietary self-experiment. You know, it's January. Like, let's, let's, let's do a little self-experiment. And they push again, which would be weird, right? Because you've already given them an answer. You can say, I don't really have anything else to say about it. I'm just really enjoying it right now. And that can be your yellow and you don't even need to have to go to red. There's really nothing else to say. I'm just really enjoying my Whole30 right now. Or I do one a lot. I do one often in January and just feels really grounding for me. That's it. And if they go, but like, why? What about it? If the why is coming from a place of genuine curiosity where they're like, tell me more. I've heard about Whole30, but I thought it was a weight loss diet. Like, tell me more. Feel free to explain. I like the idea. And in Whole30 Day by Day, in the very beginning of the journal, I invite you all to create a Whole30 elevator pitch, which is like when people say, what is the Whole30? You, It's on page 15 of Whole30 Day by Day. When people say, what's the Whole30? What are you going to say to them? Create like a quickie elevator pitch, right? Whole30 is a 30-day self-experiment designed to help me figure out how the foods I'm eating work for me, right? Whatever that sounds like. If they're asking just to be nosy, you can literally say, oh, there's nothing more to it. I'm just enjoying it right now. And then change the subject. Changing the subject is the best way to make it clear that you're not going to continue that conversation, right? So, but like, why? Why do you do it every January? Just works well for me. Uh, but tell me about that vacation you went on. It looked amazing. I've never been to Tahiti. Tell me more. It's pretty simple. So think about some of those responses, pre-green and green. You can answer the question without answering the question, and then you can make it super clear. Like, look, there's nothing more to it. Or like, I'm not going to say more right now. Or, you know, maybe you could even say, I actually have some medical reasons for doing it, but I'm not comfortable discussing those. As in, please stop being so nosy about my personal life or my you know, medical history. Um, but there are a lot of ways to say it that are still perfectly polite and very kind, but very clear. So hopefully those help. I want you to think about what you could say. 
write a couple down, practice them a few times so they sound very natural and comfortable and confident when they're coming out of your mouth when you are in that position. Um, yes, Vicki, anytime your doctor, dentist, registered dietitian, mental health practitioner, if a healthcare professional says, I would like you to do this, those directions always supersede Whole30 program rules. Absolutely, without question. So please do keep doing exactly what your dentist wants you to do, especially if you're finding it helpful. So yes, Lisa, oh, you're going to a retreat. Good for you. That sounds fun. I love that you're packing some stuff. I think that sounds great. I love that you are prepared and you're going to go in not having to worry or think about food. So you'll be able to spend all of your energy at this retreat. I hope you have a good time. Sounds like you're absolutely doing it right. I love that. Autumn. Yeah. <laughs> this doesn't surprise me, Autumn. I love that about you. Yes, we will, we will throw the entire bottle in our purse. So that is totally fine. Danny, when, you, when it comes to cooking oil on the Whole30 and eating out at restaurants, this can be like a really tricky gray area because most, most restaurants use a blend of cooking oils, right? They'll say, oh, we use like most restaurants, we'll use canola, we'll use safflower, we'll use sunflower. Oh, we might use like a soybean oil mix in some foods. You can certainly ask about it, but I would not necessarily expect you to make decisions based on the specific cooking oil used in the restaurant, because chances are you're not going to get like a super solid answer. So generally speaking, when I go, unless it's, you know, I don't know, when I ask for olive oil, when I ask for oil and vinegar for my salad, I'll say, do you have olive oil as the dressing? But you can ask a restaurant about the cooking oil. Chances are you're not going to get a satisfactory answer. And I wouldn't want you to go to dinner and, not, and then not eat anything because you worry that there might be a little bit of soybean oil mixed in with the canola that the restaurant is using. So that's like kind of a technicality. I think it's completely fine for you to not use those cooking oils at home and to use other cooking oils. And then when you go out to eat, you know, you're going to do the best you can with the information you have. But I've had a really, I don't think I've ever been to a restaurant where I've been like, what cooking oil do you use? And they're like, oh, we use a blend. And it's like, okay, like I'm going to do the best I can in that situation. So I wouldn't stress about that too, too much. What do I eat with my kite hill? Well, Elizabeth, kite hill with any form of like jerky or meat stick is absolutely heaven. I got turned on to this. I just, I don't know. I like weird combinations of food and I tried it one day and it was absolutely heaven. So you can take your chomp snack stick, your Nick sticks, your Epic bar, your new primal meat stick. A lot of those are on sale right now at Thrive Market um, or your Aoba Drewers or your Biltong, whatever. And you just dip it in Kite Hill and the creaminess of the Kite Hill just gives a little something extra to the meat stick. Like it makes it just more M. I don't like the word moist, but I say M, but you know what I mean? It just gives it like that texture and that flavor. You can also use it as a dip, of course, for raw veggies if you want. So bell pepper, carrot, celery. I think the way I like it the best is to add creaminess in like a lettuce wrap or over a burger. So I will very often take Applegate Deli Turkey or True Story Deli Turkey. I'll wrap the turkey around a red bell pepper slice. So I wrap the turkey around. Then I take a like lettuce leaf, usually romaine, sometimes like bib, and I will coat the lettuce leaf in the cream cheese. And then I kind of use that and wrap it around the turkey that's wrapped around the bell pepper. So there's crunch inside with the bell pepper. I've got some good turkey. I've got the creaminess of the kite hill. And then I've got my lettuce wrap. That's a great meal. I like it on burgers as well. And I think that there are some really delicious recipes that you can make using it. So I would say just try it in places where you feel like you could use a little extra texture, a little extra creaminess, or you can use it as a dip. Those are all things that I very much like to do. Yes. Oh, I love this, Erica. How great. Your team scheduled your catered lunch after, oh, I love this, to support your Whole30. You know, I've talked all the time about telling people how they can support you. In my boundary practice, in the book of boundaries, my relationship golden rule is say what you mean and expect others to do the same. I want you and your whole 30 to don't just assume that people are going to show up in support. Don't just hope they can read your mind and know what you need in support. Be direct. Now, you might not at work have said, 
hey, can you schedule this lunch after so I'm not inconvenienced? They did that anyway for you. That's so wonderful. It makes you probably feel so appreciated and so supported. But you know, if you've got people at work that you are friendly with and you're doing the whole 30, go in and say, hey, I know we always go to happy hour on Fridays. Just want to let you know I'm not drinking during the month of January. Still invite me, but please don't like pressure me to have a drink. I'm pretty serious about my whole 30 commitment. Or hey, we're going to do um, bagels tomorrow for lunch. Like don't, or like in the morning for the meeting. Um, I'm not going to have one because I'm doing a whole 30 right now, but like, don't worry about me. I'm going to bring my own whatever in and and I'll still enjoy it. So like, don't sweat it. You can You can ask for what you need. You can set expectations ahead of time. You can set one person, your best friend or your mom or your sister to be like, hey, can you check in with me every day, my whole 30? Just like send me a text and ask me how it's going because I would love the accountability and I would love to be able to like share something positive or better yet, you can text me and say, tell me something good that happened around your whole 30 today. And now I'm going to be looking for good things to tell you. Ask for what you need. And then people will give it to you because people are not mind readers. So I love this, Erica. What a really supportive office you're in right now. I think that is great. Kathleen, coconut aminos are made from coconut sap. So essentially, they're just another byproduct of the coconut tree. They are fermented and distilled down and they resemble very, very closely soy sauce. So they are a soy-free, wheat-free alternative to soy sauce that has a naturally kind of sweet flavor from the coconut and they are Whole30 compatible. In fact, Coconut Amino, uh, Coconut Secret is probably the biggest brand of Coconut Aminos and they are a Whole30 approved partner and you can find them in most grocery stores now um, all across the country, every kind of grocery store, not just health food stores. So they are a great alternative and when my Whole30 is over, when I'm not doing Whole30, I'm still just using coconut aminos. I'm not going back to soy sauce. I'm not using wheat-free tamari. It's just, they're delicious. They're easy. I know if I see the Whole30 approved logo, I don't have to bother reading the label. I know what it means. And I find myself just using them long after my Whole30 is over. I do really like the flavor. I'm catching up on comments now. I know the Whole30 um, HQ team is so good about answering comments. Kite Hill and garlic spread. Oh, I like that idea. Mixing the Kite Hill with the garlic spread. I think that sounds fantastic. I like that idea. Jackie puts a spoon of Kite Hill in your beef stew. Oh, I think that's so smart. I like that idea as well. Again, it just adds this creaminess or this creamy texture. I think that's wonderful. Michelle, yes, there is a whole article on the Whole30 website about coconut aminos Coconut syrup is the product that is used and distilled and fermented down. In the case of coconut aminos, that coconut syrup is the base. It's not used as an added sugar or it's not used as a sweetener. And because this is the only way that they can make coconut aminos, we wrote a whole article explaining why it is perfectly Whole30 compatible. So yes, you do not have to worry about it. And Whole30 is saying there's a good Kite Hill recipe in our next recipe email. Ooh, I like that. I would love to see more recipes featuring Kite Hill. I think that sounds good. All right, so we've talked about day five. We've talked about rolling into our weekend. If you're in the Whole30 day by day book, day five starts on page, I didn't have it bookmarked this morning, but it starts on page 44. We're still talking about day five as kind of a mixed bag kill all the things. You might be super hungry. You might be not that hungry. You might have energy. You might be really tired. It's it's definitely kind of a mixed bag. But this is also the point where I emphasize, and I'll emphasize it here, and then I'll talk a little bit about how this has evolved. There is no such thing as a perfect Whole30, and I don't want you worried about doing the perfect Whole30. Sometimes on day five, people will say to me, I think I'm eating too much fruit. I worry I'm eating too much fat because I really love Whole30 ranch and I'm kind of slathering it on everything. I'm worried about that. Or I'm not eating a ton of vegetables for breakfast. Is that okay? Or I still might find, I still find myself needing a snack at like 3 PM before dinner. Cool. NBD, no problem whatsoever. Great. Are these whole 30 foods that are going in your mouth? Yeah. Super. Do I worry at all about whether you're eating too much food, too much fat, uh, whether you're having snacks, whether you've had two Lara bars today, when you're eating, like whether you're eating four or five meals a day, I'm not worried about that one bit and I don't want you to be either. In the earlier days of Whole30, like 2010, 
even 2011, I was a lot more dogmatic about aspects of the Whole30. And I probably would have said to you, even on day five, you know, if you're picking up a Lara bar at 2 p.m. because you're having a sugar craving, I would think twice about that. You don't want to perpetuate those sugar cravings. You know, your brain says it's craving sugar and you give it a Lara bar that might be sort of feeding that bad habit. I would have said that then. And it's not that it's terrible advice if you're trying to change your habits or change your cravings. But I guess I'm understanding now over the course of the last like 13 years that I've been running people through the whole 30, we got to like, I say good enough is good enough or let good enough be good enough. And it's not that we are, I don't know, skimping on the whole 30. It's not that we're like way more relaxed than we used to be. And we're like, yeah, it's good enough. Like, yeah, the program's fine. I guess what I'm saying is on day five of a dietary change as big as the Whole30, when we're asking you to pay attention to the ingredients in your food and what you're eating and how you're putting meals together and thinking about how big your meals need to be and listening to hunger cues and fullness cues and feeling like you can trust those cues for the first time in a long time, there's enough to think about in the earlier phases of the Whole30. I'm not going to sweat any of the stuff that I might have sweated in 2011. If you're eating Whole30 compatible food, you're doing it right. Boom, end of story. If that was the only thing you thought about for the entirety of your Whole30, between now and day 30, if the only thing you cared about was putting Whole30 food in your mouth, you would still find incredible, tremendous benefits from the program. You would do great. You would crush it. You would have so many non-scale victories. You would come out thinking, I feel amazing. I feel great. If you get to week two or week three, and this whole 30 thing is starting to feel easier. You're not having to scrutinize every label anymore because you know the brands that you like and you know what to look for on the bottle and the whole 30 approved logo. And like you're stocked up in your pantry. You've got some favorite meals that you like that are on rotation. You've figured out your schedule. You've figured out how much you should be eating and whether or not you need a snack. And you always have emergency food on hand now that feels automatic. If at that point in your Whole30 journey, you feel like you have the energy and the motivation to take it a little deeper and you then start saying, okay, like, where is my food coming from? What is the quality of my beef? What is the quality of my eggs? Where am I you know, where am I getting my produce from? Am I eating seasonally? That could be one avenue. It could be, I notice I'm still having cravings. I wonder what's underneath that. I'm going to take a pause before I automatically reach for this Lara bar and just see what's underneath my cravings. Cool. Go ahead and do that. If you want to think about, you know, I really want to dial in my, my meal timing now to help better support my athletic performance. I'm really going to play around with a pre-workout meal and a post-workout meal and amounts and quantities and see if I can get my performance and recovery that much better. Yes, absolutely. Go do that. But I don't want you to force any of that. And I don't want you to feel like you have to do that all at once. Your only job is to put Whole30 food in your mouth. There is no perfect Whole30. We do not have to stress about eating too much fruit or eating too much fat. Like you're eating all real, whole, nutrient-dense, good foods. We are not worried about any of it, none of it. So I really want you to take that to heart. I don't want you to overly criticize yourself or overly pick apart your Whole30 plan. I don't want you to feel like you always have to be doing more with your Whole30. I have to eat the rainbow. I have to eat seasonally. I have to buy locally. I have to only do grass-fed or organic. No, none of that is important for your Whole30 right now until and unless you decide that you have and want the capacity to start expanding your view when it comes to your Whole30 foods. If you get to a point very naturally where you say, okay, what else could I do? I have more energy. I'm sleeping better. I feel more confident. I have good focus. This is starting to feel easy. What else could I do? If that happens, roll with it. Absolutely take advantage of that. But you don't have to force yourself to go there now, and I don't want you to. Because I don't want you to put so much on your proverbial Whole30 plate that you start to feel overwhelmed, that you start to feel like you're not doing it good enough, that you start to feel like you're not doing the perfect Whole30. That's not anything that I want. That's not anywhere I want your mindset to go. So I talk about that in day five. There's just a little Melissa's motivation box at the bottom of page 32. We discussed it in a lot more detail here, but I hope, oh no, sorry, not 35. It is at the bottom of page 44. Thank you. Um, 
And I just hope that that is helpful. There's also another little discussion on page 45 about like, how do I know if I'm eating too much? We kind of talked about this yesterday. You can obviously feel as though you're eating too much because you've been dieting for 20 or 30 years, counting and restricting calories. And when your body says it's hungry, you've been saying, no, you're not because we're dieting. And now when you're eating real whole food to satiety, you feel like you're eating too much, but maybe you're just nourishing yourself appropriately for the very first time in a long time. Maybe you're still trying to figure out how big to make your meals and you'll get there. I had a question yesterday from someone who was like, my breakfast was so filling that it's lunchtime and I'm still not hungry for lunch. What should I do? And it's like, okay, cool. Well then wait until you're hungry and then maybe eat a smaller lunch. And then maybe tomorrow make your breakfast a little less big or do like less leafy green vegetables at breakfast so they don't fill up your stomach quite as much. We have a lot of options to play around with here. But this is all just one big, great self-experiment. So there is no one right way. There is no one wrong way. The only thing you have to worry about is putting Whole30 food in your mouth. Um, let's. It, this is good. Let's see. It may not be popular, but a strict approach to Whole30 worked great for me. You know, I think this concept of like what a strict Whole30 is, is interesting because the the Whole30 is strict in the sense that any elimination diet is going to require you to completely eliminate the foods that you are testing for sensitivity. So for 30 days, the Whole30 rules say you will completely eliminate. That means that it's not like your Whole30 during the week, but on the weekends you kind of YOLO. That doesn't mean that you do the Whole30, but like you still keep cream in your coffee or wine in your glass. In that way, the Whole30 is strict. How, you, how far you choose to take that though, right? If you really want to follow the recommendation that you, you know, don't snack between meals and you really want to dial in and make sure that your meals are all the right size and big enough and you focus on that, like, cool, if that feels good to you, if that feels right to you, absolutely. If you want to do a strict Whole30 in the sense that you make things from scratch and you don't lean on convenience products, you really want the experience of, reading all your labels, making things from scratch, cooking your stuff at home. And you don't want to do a Chipotle salad bowl. You don't want to order a Primal Kitchen ranch. Cool. You should absolutely do that. What I do want to say, and I'm not saying that this is your experience at all, but what I do want to say is sometimes when people are real original Whole30 years, like they've been with me since the earliest days of 2009, 2010, CrossFit, when the language was like so much stronger and so much more definitive and it was so much more tough levy emphasis on the tough, not the love. Some people can go into a current Whole30 voice and they will say, you know, it's not Whole30 if you're like buying Chipotle salad bowls and buying your ranch. When I did Whole30, I walked uphill in the snow both ways. We had to make our own mayo and there were no coconut aminos and there, you know, there was no nut pods coffee creamer. I want to be really clear that like both of these scenarios, whether you're buying convenience, whether you are ordering from Chipotle, ordering from Trifecta, buying mayo, buying ranch, you know, taking advantage of all of the incredible Whole30 food uh, approved convenience products, or whether you're just making it all yourself because you're budget conscious and you want to learn the skills and you want to cook at home, both of those are equally Whole30. You are equally Whole30 no matter which approach you take. And I don't want anyone to feel like they're doing a somehow less than version of Whole30 if they are using convenience products. If they are letting real plans plan your meals, that's no less Whole30. We've come a long way in the last 12 years, 13 years. Think about the plethora of Whole30 approved goods. If I can walk into an airport and buy Nick Sticks, if I can walk into a gas station and buy Chomps, if I can walk into a Walmart or an Aldi or a Target or any local grocery store and get a huge variety of Whole30 approved goods, that logo right there on the label, take advantage of that if you want to. Take advantage of that. I think it's amazing that we have all of these different options. And if convenience isn't your priority, budget is your priority, or kitchen skills are your priority, we've got a ton of free resources for you too. For every convenience product we offer, we will give you a free recipe for how to make it yourself, whether it's ranch dressing or mayo or bone broth or whatever. We've got a recipe for that. We've got a tip for you. We've got a trick for you. You can make your own. 
So we really do span the gamut when it comes to accessibility. We think about accessibility from such a broad lens and no one approach is like more Whole30 than the other. So when it comes to the Whole30, we want you to do a strict Whole30 in that I want you to only eat Whole30 foods for 30 days, right? Those are the rules. I do want you to follow those rules because the science of an elimination diet says that will give you the most learning experience, completely eliminate, reintroduce carefully and systematically. That's where your bang for the buck is. Everything else is like gravy. It's all just options. And you can choose and, you know, a la carte mix and match from our options of convenience and budget and make your own and automated and do it yourself. We have all of these different resources in our entire environment and they're all available to you. So I think that was a really, thank you for that prompt. And I think that was an awesome discussion. I think that's great. And I really had, I like the opportunity to be able to share that because that's probably not how I would have talked about it 10 years ago. Um, and when we know better, we do better. And we're not afraid to do that over here at Whole30. Meredith, I'm glad you're enjoying them. Thank you very much. Any other questions about day five? How we are doing um, heading into the weekend? Tracy left an NSV that I want to acknowledge. You have had to manually grab your ankle to lay your... Oh, Tracy, that's amazing. That's not small. That's huge. You have experienced an enormous improvement already in flexibility, mobility. This is going to translate just into like how you live your life. I think that's wonderful. I hope you high-fived yourself for that because we sure are here. I think that is absolutely amazing. Great work. Um, Aaron. Yeah, Aaron, I wrote a whole article about Kite Hill. A whole article because I know people have questioned whether or not, according to the pancake rule, things like nut cheese would be compatible. So there is an article about Kite Hill. We evaluated Kite Hill in the context of being Whole30 approved for two years before we invited them on board. They wanted to be on board. I was a huge fan of the company and the products, but we wanted to suss it out and see how the community responded. Would this be a food with no breaks? Would this be something that we felt people, you know, were kind of taking away from people's Whole30 experiences? And so happily, after two years of observation and analysis, we realized that that's not at all how people were using Kaito. They were using it for added texture, for added creaminess, for added flavor. Um, and so we were thrilled to be able to bring them on as Whole30 approved. And we think it is a great fit for the community. We always want to include as much in the Whole30 as we can. Right? We want to eliminate as little as possible and still have people get incredible life-changing results. And we are always analyzing where that line is. And we'll make changes to the rules as we need to based on new science, based on our clinical experience, observing hundreds of thousands of people do the Whole30 over the years. So thank you so much. Whole30 just dropped the link in about that whole uh, Kite Hill and Whole30 approved. Um, Coralie, I am going to do a live tomorrow. The only day I'm going to take off is Sundays. I'm going to keep Sundays for my family, but I will be here at the exact same time tomorrow and we can do kind of a more casual check-in even. I mean, these have been casual, I feel like, but yeah, come join whenever you want to. Same time, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And just like check in, let me know how your Saturday is going. If you have any questions, if you need help with if then plans, if you want some recipe advice, if you just want to connect, if as Meredith is saying, these lives have made you want to kill less things. I mean, I'm going to say that's like a success. I'm going to give myself a high five for that. I'm really happy, Meredith, that you have felt that these are helpful and that these were great for your mental health. And Stacy is seeing NSVs in your hands. I love that so much. I mean, look, again, I want you to prompt yourself with one of two questions over the course of the weekend, okay? Why am I rocking my Whole30 so hard? Why am I crushing this Whole30? Why am I succeeding with this Whole30? Prompt the brain to look for evidence. The second prompt is, why am I seeing so many unexpected benefits from my Whole30? Why am I seeing so many surprising benefits coming up already just on day five. Prompt the brain to look for those. When you notice them, give yourself a high five, give yourself a good job, put a star on your calendar, mark a check in your day-by-day -day journal, whatever that looks like. And then we can come back tomorrow and talk about it some more. 
I hope that everybody has a wonderful day five. Enjoy the rest of your Friday and Friday night. And I will see you here tomorrow on Saturday for our day six kind of casual weekend toll 30 check-in. Thanks everybody so much for joining. We will see you soon. Aaron, boy, I'm loving that for you. I think this is the perfect one to close on. Go get some good sleep tonight, Aaron. Thanks everyone. See you later.